Welcome friends. This is my very first YouTube video, so if you like what you see, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to encourage me to make more. Here you see before you the Humble Paper Shredder. This is a standard model. They all work about the same. It's got the auto off and reverse switch. The slot you put paper in. And this is the type that goes with a waste paper basket. So it has a uh, sliding adjustment on the side. Others come with their own basket to make it simple. I picked this up at a thrift store. It says $4.99 on it, but with discounts and all, it cost me only two bucks. Uh, so we're going to pull this thing apart and see what's inside it. Now I've already taken all the screws out of it, so we'll just go ahead and do that now. Wait. This is a ripoff. I didn't even get two dollars out of this thing. What's going on here? Just kidding. I took the guts out earlier. Want to see the guts? We'll take a look at those next. Here we see the innards of the paper shredder all laid out on my workbench. It has the elements you'd expect. We have the uh, power cord on the left the switch which is auto off and reverse we have teeth for cutting cutting wheels we have a motor and a gear train we're going to cover off some of those things in more detail next so let's zoom in on the motor and gear train and talk about those First thing to notice is that the gear train power is delivered by this helical gear on the motor. We have a series of gears that change it from a high speed low torque characteristic of the motor to a low speed high torque characteristic that's needed for the paper shredder. So you can think of this as we need to be able to provide a lot of power to shred lots of pieces of paper you know we've all had the experience of paper getting jammed putting in too many or whatever it is uh, but we don't necessarily need to do that quickly and if you've used one of these you know that one of the features of them is that they don't really operate all that quickly now next let's talk about the motor here we can see the motor in a closer shot you can see the field coil here top brush here there's a corresponding bottom brush that you may not be able to see inside here is a commutator we've got uh, an iron core to concentrate the magnetic field and we've got four wires going in but what are the four wires all about well we started with two wires from the wall went through a switch and we came out with four wires so based on the fact that this has brushes and also a field coil we know that it's a universal motor as they're called. That's the type of motor that runs on both AC and DC. Now in this application we're only concerned about AC but uh, the universal motor is important for for the purpose of it provides a reversible motion. So page per shredder So a paper shredder needs to be able to reverse in order to, if the paper gets jammed, you can pull it out easily. Uh, and so that's what these four wires are all about. And I haven't traced out the schematic yet, but I suspect that what we're going to see is that two of them go to the brushes. In fact, we can kind of look at that right now. The green and the yellow go to the brushes. So the other two, blue and white, must go to these field coils. So my guess is that what they're doing to reverse the motor is to reverse the polarity of the field coil relative to the uh, to the brush contacts. The teeth aren't sharp per se. I can do this without hurting myself. Oh, just kidding. 
I can do this without hurting myself. We've got we've got pairs of these that work together. They're staggered just a little bit. Uh, and there's a switch in the center. And for users of this type of system, you're familiar with the idea you have to put something in the center that you're trying to shred towards the center to kind of get it to activate on auto mode. These don't really have a forward switch, they have an auto switch, which means that auto is really forward with paper going in through this switch. And the switch only, op only affects the forward operation. We can always go reverse with this. In other words, you can always jam. If you get your paper gets jammed on one side or the other, doesn't matter. You can go to reverse by using the switch that they provide. Here's a close-up of the wheels on the opposite side. One of them is driven directly on the other end by the gear assembly and motor that we saw earlier. This one is just passive that drives the other roller off the first one, but it also has uh, the effect of reversing the rotational. Now I haven't taken other paper shredders apart, but I'm going to guess that they're all just about identical to this one. The reason is that there just isn't anything here that you can optimize. Given the needs that the paper shredder has, obviously we're shredding paper, uh, we need to be off, forward, reverse, and have this automatic feature, um, and there just really isn't any better way to do it than what's here. And this is a, seems to be a reasonably well-built unit, but uh, you know, no bells and whistles, no frills. That's the way a paper shredder is. Here's a schematic diagram of the entire paper shredder. We have the uh, wall plug, hot and neutral. We've got a 5 amp fuse, that's that little fuse you saw. We've got what I'm calling the control switch, which is the main three position switch for auto, off, and reverse. We've got the paper switch, which is kind of the activation switch for auto mode. Rotor coil and the stator coil. So in a uh, electric motor, the rotor coil, the rotor is the part that moves, the stator is the part that stays still, and each one of those in this design have their own coil. So the, what I'm calling the control switch here is has three positions of auto, which is shown here connected as it is, these two gang together, off, and reverse. So in auto operation like we're shown, suppose we we put a piece of paper in that closes this switch and the current can flow f between uh, hot through the stator coil, through the closed switch, and through the rotor coil. So both coils are energized. Now when we go to the off position, so this one goes up one notch, this one goes up one notch, uh, the stator coil is disconnected and since this is a series connection there's no path through this entire system. And that's what we want for off, of course. Now in reverse, we move up from this position to here and this position to here. And that has the net effect of reversing the direction that the stator coil is wired. So that corresponds to what I had thought earlier, which is that our reversal is going to come from somehow reversing the polarity of the current between the two uh, coils. Now one thing I didn't realize, and not being very familiar with uh, universal motors, is that uh, this is a series arrangement. I had thought that the rotor coil would be the only element affected by its commutator. And that's not true in this design since it's a series. Both rotor and stator coil are affected by the uh, commutator action. But here's the important thing is whichever direction the commutator is moving the incoming current, the relative magnetic fields between the rotor coil and the stator coil are set by whether we're in the auto position or the reverse position. So in other words, whatever's going on in this magnet and whatever's going on on the current on the line, uh, the magnetic field 
of the rotor relative to the stator is in one direction with A or really the forward position and a different direction with the reverse position. And also uh, as a couple of other items I measured about 48 ohms uh, DC resistance with this unplug between these two points uh, and as I turned the, the rotor coil manually I got about that same um, resistance no matter what position I was in, in about 45 or 46 ohms total so we can use that later on to figure out what the power of this should be approximately it's going to be greater depending on the load and maybe we'll uh, demonstrate that also okay let's plug it in and try it out now a uh, couple of things to note we have some safety issues here I'm going to be very careful to make sure I'm safe but please don't try this at home kids I am a trained professional so it's already set to auto mode and let's see what happens when I put in paper Oh, that didn't work too well. This would be a good time for reverse mode. Well, I can see one of my problems here, which is this whole assembly was not held in place by the mechanism. So lesson learned. That'll be a fun outtake for YouTube. So I'll put the lid on it and then we'll see how it works. Okay here's our second try. As you can see here on the right I've rigged up a uh, C clamp to hold things in place. This was a real quick fix. But hopefully it'll work. I'm also going to go with one piece of paper instead of six to kind of reduce the torque of the thing. Still in reverse mode. We'll change that. And let's try it with one. Yay! It works. So, I've got five left over here. Shall I be daring and try five? Okay, you convince me. Here we go. Oh, bad idea. Okay, let's go for reverse again. Lost my C-clamp. Well, I hope you at home are having as much fun with this as I am. We'll stop and take a break and get it fixed. Okay, I've already been wrestling with this thing. <clears throat> Haven't had a lot of luck, but you are about to see me solve the problem in high speed. This gives me a chance to talk about something I hadn't talked about before, which is one of the elements of this helical gear is that uh, you can't spin this backwards on its own. The only way to make this mechanism move is through uh, moving the helical gear. So I'm going to attempt to do that. Let's go over here. I'm going to try something radical, which is just let the thing jump off the bench. Ready? Again, don't try this at home, kids. I am a trained professional. Oh, went too far. Got to go back. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to attempt to pull these things out one by one. Is it unplugged? Yes.
And now that it's approximately in order, I'm going to put it back in the case. Alright, after a little pain and suffering, we got it all together. Left it on the off side. I'm going to go to reverse. There's still little bits of paper stuck in it. Let's see what happens. Okay, that's fine. A little came out there. And let's see if it'll still shred paper. I can reuse my old paper that's already partly eaten. We'll start with two sheets and work our way up. That's pretty good. Let's see. Here's three. I'm kind of jumping around a little bit, basically okay. Okay, here I've got six sheets going for broke. That's what it says, max six sheets. I'm going to hold it down. And here we go. Kind of a bucking bronco, but it works. Didn't really do that great a job on the shredding six. Maybe that was a little bit ambitious on the part of the manufacturers. Now we're going to look at the uh, power usage of the paper shredder while we put some paper through it. This is uh, three sheets. It's kind of a moderate load, so to speak, and we've got uh, uh, zero watts showing right now, as expected. We're in the off position, so that's even better. We'll go to auto. So on the meter it read from about 20 up to about 95. It has kind of a settling time so I tend to believe more of the 95. That was forward. Now we'll do reverse. We don't have any load in it. There is a little paper still stuck in it. We'll try reverse. So that's showing about uh, 95 watts as a peak again. So we'll take that as a number and go do a little math on that. Let's look at some numbers we took earlier. We had a resistance of 46 ohms. There's 122 volts coming from the wall that I measured with the same meter. We'd measured 95 watts for three sheets of paper. And that calculates out to 0.779 amps just less than one amp, which is far under the fuse value of five amps. So that's within a uh, reasonable range relative to the fuse. Not gonna blow the fuse under normal operation. And the impedance here of about 156 ohms, 157 ohms, which is uh, expected the, the impedance is greater than the DC resistance. And that's because we're consuming power through the shredder energizing the coils, running the motors, etc. So everything here adds up. So that concludes our project. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, again, please give me a like and a subscribe if you can to help me out with my very first video. Thanks YouTube.